wish for, dream of, and imagine the future. But in the real world, change won't listen. When science proves it's absolutely necessary, change doesn't know how. When technology makes it possible, change finds it risky. When everyone agrees and policies are in place, change worries about cost. In the real world, change doesn't care. Until the new is better than the old, on every level. When carbon-free energy can be stored and distributed with higher quality, at lower cost, and made more sustainable, when we make it truly available, then and only then, change flicks the switch to the future we imagined, where wind and the sun powers our every day, where electric vehicles outperform traditional cars, where transportation needs no oil and all of society runs free of carbon emissions. So, uh, my name is Peter Carlson, and uh, I founded a company called Northvolt uh, basically two years ago. And uh, the, the key mission with this company uh, was to start uh, combat and help driving a change uh, with reducing our carbon dioxide uh, problem uh, leading to global warming. And, and uh, as probably many of you know, last year was another year that despite Paris treaties and, and activities where we uh, continue to grow our carbon footprint in the world. And the key thing uh, to address this, uh, this uh, problem of increasing usage of uh, carbon footprint is basically two things. One is, is to reduce the oil dependency in our transportation systems. So going away from, from petrol and diesel into uh, other forms of energy and the most reliable and what we're seeing happening now is the electrification of, uh, uh, of the car industry. And then, uh, you know, replace coal, oil, natural gas in our energy generation systems uh, with sustainable sources, with wind, solar, hydropower and others. And in order to do that, you basically also need to balance those distribution systems and you need a lot of, of uh, uh, energy storage where batteries are a key enabler in, in making that happening. What we've seen during the, the, last, uh, the last two years is, is that uh, we're seeing both uh, specifically in the transportation industry and in the automation industry uh, a very, very strong drive uh, to move into electrification. Company after company is declaring uh, that the both the investments as well as the transformation of their uh, product portfolios into electrified vehicles. But you're also seeing, uh, uh, you're also seeing countries and cities making stands. Uh, you see that, that you know, Britain, uh, France have said that we are reaching an end of, of uh, the combustion engine by 2040. Uh, uh, Netherlands and, and Norway is talking about 2025. So, and you're saying cities like, like Paris and Stuttgart and others uh, that are uh, really starting to put ban on diesel engines and combustion engines. So we're starting to see an era where uh, we are phasing out combustion engines and we're moving into new uh, types of uh, e-mobility solutions. You know, is all this going to come from, from, uh, from China and from Korea and, and Japan? Well, uh, there is a tremendous amount of development uh, around battery te technology and battery capacity in China right now. Uh, and, and China is, is very, very dedicated in its transformation of its own industry. It has put a clear target to reduce and phase out combustion engines by 2040. And, and to quote in uh, year by year a, a larger number of electric vehicles year by year up until 2040. Uh, the China car industry is roughly 28 million vehicles a year. So in order to go to that type of electrification, China needs to build 
roughly somewhere between 40 to 50 so-called gigafactories just in order to drive this transformation. And we're talking investments in the three to four billion dollars each. So, so only to transform the, the, the China uh, uh, transportation system, we're talking hundreds of billions that is going to be needed to be invested in order to, to make this happen. And we're seeing the equivalent uh, developments in, uh, needed in Europe. So this is uh, an example of, of, a, of a, a key premium automotive maker in, in Europe. And, and what, you're, what you're basically saying is between 2019 and 2024, they are revamping their entire product lineup with, with electric vehicles. So suddenly you're starting to see electric vehicles uh, that are really uh, fully capable of, of competing with, with uh, the, the performance of the traditional uh, combustion. And, and if you talk with companies like, such as Audi, for example, Audi just raised their prognosis that, and says that we think 2025 that we're going to need roughly uh, uh, one third of our entire production is going to be electric, fully electric vehicles. And, and if you take that in as an extension of the European car industry, it basically means that Europe 2025 needs to have roughly 15 gigafactories in order to support this transformation that the car industry is, is going through. And right now, there is uh, nowhere near uh, the, the capacity and the activity happening in Europe to support this which is going to pose a, a tremendous uh, challenge on, uh, on the supply chain for this. Um, Northvolt is, is a company that is focusing yet on uh, batteries and, and battery systems, both for, for cars, but also for, for trucks and, and buses. And, and just in the last couple of years, we've seen a tremendous change where both uh, bus makers as well as truck makers uh, have said that the electrification for us is going to come beyond 2025, probably towards 2030, because of, of uh, the heavy duty, the need for large amount of batteries, etc. Now you hear a totally different, uh, uh, a totally different prognosis. You hear a totally different voice from this, saying that that even for heavy duty transport, we're going to see a large, uh, uh, large um, pull in of new electric vehicles, specifically towards city distribution, but also later on uh, towards uh, long haul, because the technology is there and the cost of ownership uh, for running these vehicles are significantly lower than running them on diesel, uh, etc. What does this imply for the market in Europe? Well. Um, if we look at, at what, uh, what we think, and this is going to be a little bit technical, but we think that in 2025, Europe is going to need more than 220, uh, 217 gigawatt hours of battery uh, for supplying this transformation. This is equal to uh, roughly A67 uh, uh, gigafactories. If we look at the demand side, we actually think that the demand side is going to be even bigger than this. But it's fairly unrealistic that the supply side, and this is supply implying and everything from, from critical raw materials, enrichments, material preparation, cell production, battery systems, uh, and the, the, this entire transformation. It's very unlikely that the supply chain is going to be able to transform in the speed that the, we see the demand uh, growing. And we see that, that transportation, specifically on light vehicle transportation, is going to be the, uh, the largest driver uh, by, by far. Uh, if, you, if you look at Volkswagen, uh, they, they've just uh, recently said, we're going to need 150 gigawatt hours alone just for Volkswagen 2025. This is you know, obviously global, but, but you have to remember a large amount of their production is happening in, uh, in, in Europe. But we're also seeing that, that energy storage, 
So the ability to build uh, energy storage for grid applications where you balance wind, solar, and other sources of a little bit intermittent energy production is going to be more and more uh, important uh, uh, going in here into a new smart grid uh, in, in Europe. The other thing that we will ha see that have a large implication on this that is, is the fact that when we're rolling out all these electrical transport means, the charging of them is going to put a new challenge to our energy distribution system. And that is peak load challenge. So I, if I take an example, if you downtown Stockholm uh, have an average of 4,000 parallelly charged electric vehicles in, in an active day, the peak load for the electricity distribution to Stockholm will double versus its actual capability today, which means that you either need to dig up the entire city and you need to pull in significant amount of copper in order to distribute more electricity, or you need to build in significant amount of energy storage so that you can bring in energy during low uh, consumption hours during night and utilize that energy during high uh, peak hours. And, and it's probably not going to be one or the other. It's, it's going to require massive investments in our infrastructure to support uh, these activities. Northvolt uh, basically started in Stockholm. We have now over uh, uh, 100 employees um, from 27 nationalities. We're bringing, uh, actually, the cell technology we're bringing from Japan and from, uh, from Korea, so we have two uh, cell design teams, uh, uh, roughly 20 people, that is now designing our, our uh, next generation cells. And then we brought in people from all over the world to help us build the most modern uh, uh, battery factory and the most vertically integrated uh, facility in uh, the world. Right now, a month ago, we put uh, the shovel in the ground to what we call Northvolt Labs, which is a 120 million euro uh, fully integrated uh, R&D and industrialization setup. We will start, uh, we'll start building batteries in that facility mid next year. And just uh, a week ago, we got the environmental approval to run and, and start our larger facility, a 32 gig gigawatt hour facility up in northern part of, of Sweden in Skellefteå. And we are just starting to clear ground on a 200 hectare uh, piece of land where we aim to start building this, uh, uh, this structure a little bit later this year to be ready end of 2020. Why do we think we have a, a chance at, at, uh, at doing this? Well, we're bringing the leading ed edge technology, the high-end lithium-ion battery uh, roadmap that we see is dri driven by automotive requirements and other industries. So that is, 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 is clearly a, a part. We are then bringing in a vertical integration that hasn't been done before. So we are integrating manufacturing processes down to the mine. And when you do that, you consume a lot of energy. Roughly to produce one unit of battery, when you are having that integrated flow, you consume 60 to 80 times the amount of energy that you produce. 60 to 80 times the amount of energy. And, and that means that if you're doing this in, uh, in, uh, uh, in an energy system where you have basically zero carbon footprint, basically using hydropower to produce these cells, you can produce the greenest battery cells on, on Earth. If you're doing this production in a coal-based energy system and you're building a, a car the size of a, of a Tesla or the new Audi Q-Tron, so 80, 90 kilowatt hour of battery pack, you are building in somewhere between three and a half to four tons of CO2 in producing that, that battery. So instead of, of solving one problem, you know, reducing our oil dependency, we're building another problem if we're not smart about how we go about uh, uh, doing this, this transformation. The other piece is, is to, build, uh, uh, to build recycling. 
And, and today there is, there is not an efficient circular flow on how to, uh, how to take back batteries at, at the end of life. Our batteries will not come back until 2030 or, or so. But it is important, the day when we start to bring back the batteries, uh, that we can reuse the, the materials, because there is key materials that we're going to need in terms of lithium, cobalt, uh, nickel, manganese, graphite, etc., and that we want to, to recycle. The way it's done today is with pyrotechnical methods. We think that it might be smarter to use chemistry and reversing the manufacturing method in order to dissolve and reuse the, the raw materials uh, that we're using. And since we have a very, very vertically integrated flow where we are actually producing the active material for the, the, uh, the, the cathode, we can also bring in a recycling process into, um, into the process. So the last thing I want to show you is just a, 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 short, a short glimpse of the factory, and uh, that's uh, about it. See if we can get it going. really up in the north, <laughs> uh, where and this is the, the 200 hectare land uh, that we're building the, the plot on. And we're building it to four phases, so four times eight gigawatt hours. And, and roughly uh, each eight gigawatt hours represent roughly 120,000 vehicles uh, on, uh, on an annual basis. Of output. The length of the production line is roughly 920 meters, which means that you actually have to take care. Uh, taking consideration the earth radius when you're uh, when you're at, when you're doing the foundation uh, so you have everything from the precursor the active material and this is then what's becoming a more traditional plant the slurry mixing the coating the pressing the slitting uh, the winding the cell assembly and uh, and the formation And this is, is just some, some rendering. What, what is interesting with the battery industry is, is that in order to produce higher and higher energy density batteries, your environment becomes more and more semiconductor-like. So we are talking environment that is highly clean room and also uh, dry rooms at the point of dew point somewhere between minus 40 to minus 60, which means that the biggest source of, uh, of, uh, um, of moisture is actually the humans that you have in production, which means that you want to, uh, you want to reduce that at the largest extent possible. And that's why we have been teaming up with both Siemens as well as ABB to take European automation technology and bring an even more efficient production uh, to Europe. Thank you very much.